Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for listening. We're going to continue our series introducing you to the newcomers on the Shocker basketball teams. Our guest today is TJ Williams. TJ is a freshman. He's a six foot five guard, attended Wichita Heights High School, where he was the 2024 Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year. He averaged 15 points, 7.1 rebounds, and 3.8 assists for the Falcons. Heights won the City League title and placed second in the Class 6A tournament in the spring. In 2022, TJ helped Heights win the 6A title. 2023, the Falcons were the runner-up, so quite a run at the state tournament for Heights during TJ's time there. TJ, favorite moment as a Heights Falcon? Just a great basketball tradition. I think everybody knows that going back many, many years. What was your your favorite memory from your high school career? <laughs> uh, my favorite memory would definitely have to be uh, holding that plaque up at the end of 2022 season. Um, that was just a special group of guys. We worked our tails off, uh, especially me being a young guy, being a leader on that team, being a sophomore. So just being young and getting to enjoy that moment with my brothers, it was really good. So when I read off your stats, I think the thing that jumps out to me is that's a well-rounded stat line. Describe your game, how it evolved to where you can be such a good passer, defender, all those things. Uh, really, my teammates, they put me in good positions to where I could you know, read the floor and do what I do best, uh, just get downhill and make my reads. Uh, just being around those guys, especially just knowing when they're going to shoot. Uh, one thing that's really big at Heights is anticipation. So just knowing the next guy's going to shoot it, you got to go get it or go rebound. You know he's going to backdoor, just pass it. So just, just really getting a brotherhood together and learning each other really helped us. So Heights and Capon have dominated the City League in recent years. Your teammates with Henry Thangval, who played mm-hmm. at Capon. Do you guys ever talk about those? Some great games, some buzzer beaters, some pain on, and joy on both sides over the last yeah. three or four years. Uh, we haven't really talked about it cause, just really because he beat me twice his senior year. Uh, he wasn't around when we start beating them. But his brother was, and me and his brother played on the same AAU team. So, you know, we just give each other a hard time. Like, it's just all fun and games at the end of the day. It's just really just being boys. A lot of good City League basketball. So your coach at Heights, Joe Auer, he told uh, Scott Pask of KSHSAA Covered that you embraced every aspect of leadership in a way no other player of his had. Describe being a leader. What's that mean to you? Um, I really just took on that role because I feel like, just just me like not a lot of things can really break me like get to me so just knowing like it never this never happened but like you know teammate missed the game winner layup or something like that like I rather go around people saying that what I could have did early on in the game rather than people narrowing it down on the last layup like oh they could have won if he would have made the layup like nah we could have won if I would have made this that and the other so just being able to just take leadership and ownership and what I really do it just made me a better leader how did you learn that? Um, really just, I mean, always just being, I was always the youngest on the team. So growing up on every team, I was always the youngest. Um, everybody's birthdays were so before mine, I was always the youngest the little guy, but not really little because I was like kind of taller than everybody. <laughs> but just, you know, just having a voice being heard, um, you don't want to go out there and just be out there. Like I'm going to go out there, I'm going to have fun doing what I love to do and just be vocal with it. Yeah, would you describe yourself as a lead-by-example person or a, or a vocal leader or a mixture of both? Uh, really a mixture of both, but the more and more I get familiar with these guys, um, lead-by-vocal lead by vocal really is what I'm on. So, you know, I'm going to let you know when you're messing up, and hopefully you will let me know when I'm messing up. And, you know, we just iron for iron, for iron you know, just keep sharpening each other up. So Heights has just an outstanding basketball tradition. People would remember the great Darnell Valentine, Antoine Carr teams, Doc Holden from the late 70s, and then that has continued. Uh, what was it like being a, a part of that tradition, winning another state title for that program? Uh, it was really cool. Uh, obviously, when, you, when you're young, you don't really think about things like that. But now looking back, it's like, okay, I'm really up there with, you know, the Mountain Rushmore of Heights, uh, I believe. Um, it's a lot of guys that have been through there and just to be blessed to be one of the only to you know do a certain amount of things is uh, just really awesome to me and then that fits in with uh, Wichita State basketball has been on a good run of local players in last year talk about Evan Wessel played at Heights Connor Frankamp Xavier Bell on the current team Samaj Haynes Jones from East Mm -hmm. Was it important for you to play in your hometown? Was that part of your decision process to become a Shocker? Yeah, definitely, Uh, especially being young, coming to all the games. uh, 
being a ball boy at one point and just watching that run when they went like like 36 and 0, 35 and 0, something like that. Uh, it just really inspired me. Like I've always wanted to be a shocker in the back of my mind, uh, passing the facility every day going to school or going home because I live down the street. But it's just always so cool just looking at it and like, dang, I could really call that home one day. So for me to be able to call it home now is just really a dream. So you were a ball boy. I was. Okay. Do you have a favorite shocker or favorite memory from being around those teams? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I got two. Uh, Clean Anthony Early, for sure. Clean Anthony Early, for sure. Dang, I got three, matter of fact. Clean Anthony, Takel, and then uh, Fred. Fred, really, because, I mean, it's Fred. Like, he was just so good here and just inspired me. Just keep working, working, working. And um, he posted me on his Instagram page when I was in, like, third grade. So I just felt just felt so good towards him and hopefully you know in the next few years I could work out with him or whatever the case may be okay excellent those are three three obviously very good shockers good memories uh LeBron or Michael Jordan I've been asking everybody this who's mm. the greatest I feel like LeBron okay I that, feel like LeBron and tell us why he does he literally does everything you can put him in any position any situation he's gonna know what to do it's gonna be dominant and then he just the longevity speaks for itself. I mean, and that's just crazy to me because he the only one to do it. So I just feel like he to go. Okay. Good good arguments. Can't argue with that. Do you have a favorite NBA player, somebody you really enjoy watching, somebody maybe you model parts of your game after? Um, my, fin- my favorite NBA player is Giannis. Uh, obviously, I ain't seven foot and 240. But uh, – <laughs> That's just my favorite player, just to, just really because his motor. He's always going to go, always going to play hard. Uh, he know he don't try to sit out when he is. You know, he's he not out for too long. Uh, just always giving 110, and whatever people say, he just takes it and goes with it and then just keeps working. Giannis, good choice. What do you want Shocker fans to know about your game, maybe envisioning uh, fans walking out of the arena in January? What do you, want, what do you hope they're thinking and saying about T.J. Williams? Uh, just a young guy, just coming in from from high school, just to fill out the experience, fill out college, honestly, uh, have fun, and obviously he's going to play defense, get buckets, do what he's supposed to do for the team to win. So you've been at practice here about three weeks or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, toughest practice drill, is there one that you uh, kind of dread a little bit? Uh, I'd say... I'd say the layups in a certain amount of time. Like, you hear that and you would think it's easy, but it's like a real short amount of time. You got to make a certain amount of layups. So you just really got to keep pushing. And, you know, you can't get tired because you got to keep going, keep going, keep going to where you make the target. And if you don't, you got to run. So, like, that's really the back end of it. You don't want to run. And is this the full court? Everybody's sprinting, going up and down. You got Mm -hmm. a team has to make X amount of layups in X amount of time. I've seen that, seen that many times. Uh, What are your early impressions? What's practice like? How do you describe it to to fans? Uh, Early impressions. Everything's been cool. Everything's been smooth. Uh, The team jailed together really good. Uh, Obviously, I thought coming in it was going to be kind of awkward. Maybe the first couple weeks or whatever the case may be, but all these guys have been playing each other for prep high school or college, and, you know, me being from here, I already knew the half the team from coming here last year, so everybody just gelled together really good. So everybody's, on the team standpoint, is really good, and then the coaches just being um, reasonable. They know, you know, freshmen, like, all right, you're going to have some jitters here and there, but, like, you know, everybody just know, everybody here for a reason, so everybody can ball. So coaches just really believing in everybody and just, we just going to get the job done. Has there been a older guy who's been particularly helpful in helping you get ready for practice, get ready for the being in college, academics, all mm-hmm. that? Um, I'd have to say probably Xavier Bell, uh, just another mm-hmm. local kid, you know, just getting me ready for, you know, all the criticism that's going to come with it, all the uh, politics, like everything's going to be said about you. But then again, the city could also love you too, so – Either or, you know, just keep your head on straight. Don't just try to narrow it out. I wouldn't say don't listen to it because you're you're gonna hear it here and there. But you know, just try to narrow it out. Um, and it's yeah, just a whole lot of things on the court. He helps me out with, but that's really the main thing he really helped me out with. I I hope he's telling you ignore social media. Has that been yeah. part of his advice package? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would. That's uh, that's pretty sound advice. If you weren't playing basketball, is there another sport you would be playing in college? In college, I don't know. Uh, did you have a second sport, something else you I did. I only played basketball all my life. 
But I feel like, I don't know. I feel like if I would have took swimming seriously, I could have been a really good swimmer because I can really swim. So if I would have like took the time to train and all that stuff, I feel like I would have been pretty good at swimming. Okay, interesting one. I haven't heard a lot of swimming in, in my time doing this. <laughs> Tell us about your journey with basketball. When did that become your passion, your favorite? Uh, I was in fourth grade. Or not fourth grade, when I was four years old, sorry. Um, I picked up a basketball my dad put it in my hands and just told me, like, hey, son, you know, we could try this sport out, and if you like it, we can go on with it. So for him to do that for me, and I loved it. Uh, obviously, everyone in my family played, so just being around it was just really cool. Then get on a travel team, starting the travels, turn to see players. Um, I actually, Grady, Dick. He played on my uh, organization when we were young, and just seeing him play, and obviously X played too, and a lot of other lo- local guys that I can call like big brothers to me, uh, just really inspired me to go hard every day, and then um, just seeing them all pave off in their own way, like I just felt like deep down I could get my own too. Zion Pipkin is going to be our next guest, also a freshman. He's a guard from Houston. Give fans a little scatter report on Zion. What kind of impression has he made early in these practices? Um, that's my guy. That's my roommate, actually. So we're the only two freshmen, so I, we're the youngest. Uh, I'm young. I'm the youngest, but we are the youngest. So uh, just being with him, just been really cool. Uh, his game, we can really shoot that thing. And I don't know how, but he don't get tired. That man got unlimited stamina. So just seeing him knock shots down and then really pick you up 94 feet, being a hassle, being a gnat, just always on it. He's going to play hard all the time. What are you listening to, reading, watching? What would you recommend for the people? Uh, I'm, I'm really big into music. I listen to a lot of genres. But um, really, what I've been on right now is some Party Next Door. Um, it sounds like party music, but it's just some chill music. Just get your vibe right, get your mind cleared, and just um, enjoy your day. Do you have a music routine before practice or before game that you're listening to? Tell us about that. I actually got a song. So it's a song by Drake. And um, Drake and Lil Baby is called Wants and Needs. And I listen to that before every game just because the first time I ever listened to it, um, that was actually one of my best games I've ever had. So before every game, I listen to it, and it just keeps me going. Okay, good choice. Last thing, we'll let you uh, be a mentor. So you've been through the recruiting process now. You're early in your college career. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to a high school athlete who is maybe starting that that process? Uh, what I would have to say is just enjoy it. Enjoy it for real because it's going to fly by. Like People telling me that all the time when I was 15 and getting recruited. And I was like, uh, yeah, like I still got years left. But like being here now, it's like, dang. I wish I would have. I wish I would have. So some of those things I wish I would have done. Um, I wish I would have took more visits. Uh, you got to take advantage of that. You really have to. Just go out and explore. Whether if if you know you don't want to go there or not, just go explore. Go see what's out there. And go, go talk to coaches. Get some advice. And just build your game. Um, another thing is just taking care of your body. Young. Um, obviously, when you're like a junior in high school, you can go to the gym and not really care about stretching, just go straight in and hoop. But being older now, just taking care of your body is a real, real aspect. Okay, TJ Williams, freshman guard from Heights High School. TJ, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, this is Rick Muma, president of Wichita State University. Check out the latest episode of the Forward Together podcast. Each episode, I sit down with different guests from Shocker Nation to celebrate the vision and mission of Wichita State University. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to the Roundhouse Podcast and our series introducing fans to the new Shockers on the basketball team. Our guest is Zion Pipkin. Zion is a six foot one freshman guard from Houston's Legacy School of Sports Sciences, where he played for former Shocker PJ Kuznard. 24 7 Sports ranked Zion the number 11 player in the state of Texas last season, listed him with having offers from Colorado, Houston, Sam Houston State 
and TCU. Zion, let's start. Tell us about your journey to Wichita State. How did you end up choosing the Shockers? Uh, like choosing them was kind of easy because like I knew it fit my playing style with Coach Mills and like I, I like uh, the guys. I like playing like. I like playing with them and being around them. Like I feel like that was cool. So it was kind of an easy decision for me, like like in one of what I wanted to do for the future and academically. So yeah. So I picked Paul Mills has a lot of Houston roots. Uh, did that help? Was that part of the decision process? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about playing for PJ Kuznard. He is well known around Wichita State, remembered fondly for a lot of reasons. What was it like playing for PJ? Uh, playing for PJ, it was cool. You know, like you know, you had to play defense. You know the things you had to do because he going he gonna embed it in practice. So you just gotta know, like we're gonna play defense. We're gonna definitely, I'm gonna say defense again because we're gonna sit down and play defense. Uh, just playing hard and you know, like just playing with each other and playing like playing for each other. You know, so making an extra pass to the corner when you have to, you know, taking the right shots when we have to, getting to the paint, you know, yeah. P.J. was a good defender when he was here. As a coach, how does he get guys to buy in? How does he get you to enjoy defense, to value that part of the game? Uh, Well, you either going to play defense or you finna run, so it's your choice which one you want to do, so, yeah. Did you buy in immediately, or did you do a little running before you figured it out? Uh, I I bought I, I bought in, but you know, like people on the team, you know, will buy in. So we all had to run as a team and do things as a team. So you know, it was all cool at the end of the day. So you have a, you have a reputation as a good defensive player. When did you figure out the value of, of that part of the game? Not everybody does that. Offense is more fun. Uh, when did you begin to like defense? Uh, I have to say, at a young age, I just love the game. Like you know. Growing up, you know, just just watching players, you know, play defense and like certain gyms I was in and stuff, like just watching players play. So I just I just love defense as a little kid, really. Did PJ ever talk about his 2006 NCAA tournament game against Tennessee? Yeah, did he ever make you yeah, watch he talk, the highlights? He talk about it all the time. He's going to say he was a dog. That's all he's going to say. He was a dog. Here are his numbers from that 2006 uh, Sweet 16 game against Tennessee, or game to go to the Sweet 16. He had 20 points, made six of seven shots, nine rebounds, five assists. Yeah. Pretty solid game for yeah, PJ. Efficient. He had four turnovers, but I'm sure yeah. those are probably his, probably his teammates' fault yeah. on that. Okay, that's interesting. So you're well aware of his exploits against Tennessee. Yes, sir. Interesting. You come from a big family, eight siblings. Tell us about that. What's it like growing up in an atmosphere like uh, that? Growing up in a big house, like a big family like that, like you, you have no choice but to grow up fast. You see a lot of things, and you know where to go right and like wrong because like you see a lot of your older siblings make certain mistakes and stuff. And I just say like knowledge, like you gain a, a lot of knowledge growing up in big families like that. Okay. Uh, point guard, such an important position on a team. What's your mindset about describing the position? What's it take to be great doing point guard things? Uh, I know becoming a, like being a great point guard, you have to be a great leader. And I feel like I had to get better at that, but that'll come along. And um, uh, just being a good point guard is playing defense and playing hard. Everything else is going to come with it just because if you're working, like just put in that work and everything, gonna, every, everything else is going to come with it. Just play hard, really. Leadership, always an interesting subject. How do you go about becoming a better leader? Just talking more on defense, just talking more off the court, just anything, really, just so everything. Communication. Yes, sir, communication, being a leader. Uh, so what do you want Shocker fans to know about your game? Let's say it's January, they're walking out of the arena. What do you hope they're thinking about Zion Pipkin? Uh, they're going to know Zion Pipkin is going to play hard every position or try to play hard every position. It's my only goal, and, and come out and try to come out with every win. It's my only goal is to win. So the Shockers are three weeks or so into practices. What are your early impressions? What's it been like, the adjustment to, to college basketball? Uh, this is really the game speed. Uh, I feel like the speed is different and the physicality, that's really about it. And you really have to just make shots. Like Making shots is important, really. And yeah, I, I say that. What's the toughest practice drill? Is there one that you just don't uh, really look forward to? Uh, I say the toughest one is probably playing uh, playing defense full court, but that's tough for anybody really. So yeah, playing defense full court. That would be a tough one. Yes, sir. Uh, you are one of two freshmen on this team, along with T.J. Williams from uh, Wichita Heights. We had him earlier. I gave him an opportunity to tell the fans about your game. You tell us about T.J. What's the scouting report on T.J. Williams? 
he going to fly high. That's all I got to say. He willing to jump over anybody, really. He going to fly high, play hard every time. That's TJ. Is there a veteran uh, who's been helpful in showing you the ropes of college life, off the court, on the court, practice drills, whatever? Uh, I, I have to say all my all the, the older guys been been there for me in every which way. So I just I just really want to thank all of them. Like they they've been good to me and TJ, of course. So yeah. If you weren't playing basketball, is there another sport you'd be playing in college? Uh, I'd probably be playing football. I'd probably be playing running back. Running back? Yes, Did sir. you play that in high school? No, I played it in middle school, I, I, but I, I was real good. What switched you over to basketball? I mean, I was number one in the city, so like that was pretty simple. Like Just go play basketball. So, yeah. Stick with it. Yes, okay. Uh, LeBron or Michael Jordan, who's the greatest? I'm going to go with Kobe. Just off the mentality and the dog he got, like he wanted them once. Okay, sure. I've asked all of the newcomers. You're the first one to go with anybody other than LeBron. Why did you go with Kobe Bryant? It's just like his mindset. Like his mindset to the game was different. Like if he have a, if he having a bad game, he right back in the gym. So you're not gonna be able to tell him nothing the next day. So that's why I like Kobe. Like, yeah. What are you watching or reading, listening to? What What's a recommendation you'd give the give the fans? Something to check out, maybe on Netflix or. Uh, uh I say on Netflix, I probably want to watch that new the new show called Supercell. I feel like that was a good good show. It's a lot of superheroes and stuff, so yeah, it's a good show to watch. Okay, last question. We'll give you a chance to hand out some advice. Uh, so you've been through the recruiting process, uh, landed you here at Wichita State. What advice would you give a high school freshman or sophomore who's who's starting this process? Uh, don't get caught up in everything. You, the work still has to be done. So regardless of anything, just still put in that work because at the end of the day, nothing don't matter if you're not putting in work. So just put in that work and just pray and keep God first. Everything going to be good, really. All right, very good. Zion Pipkin, a freshman guard from Houston. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Great insight as always. Thanks for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can always find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Martin, left wing to Mike Jones. Eight seconds left. Smithson, out to Mike Jones. 25-footer. Good! He got it with three seconds left. Mike Jones, from about 25 feet out, hit another long jumper. Two seconds showing on the clock. That may not be official, but Wichita State leads 66-65. Timeout, Kansas. Two seconds to go. Wichita State, 66. Kansas, 65.